Here lie the trophies of some of the great hunters of the past. They walk beneath our feet, fly above our heads, and cross our paths. If one desires to find these treasures, he need not look far, but right in front of him. He shall cast in his net and become an insect hunter. I see you found me a personal collection. My name's Angus and I'm here to tell you a thing or two. I've got all sorts of trophies here of all types of animals. I even love to collect insects too. As you can see, I've been hunting my whole life. I've got all sorts of mounts here so I can preserve those animals I've collected over the years. Ladies love a man with lots of trophies, and I've got plenty of stories to tell my friends about every single one of them. If we mount our animals, we're saving them a trip to the garbage heap. It allows us to keep them preserved for a long time. It also allows us to share the beauties of nature without having to hold all the creepy crawlies. As you can see, if you look over here, I pin my insects in the traditional way. But modern people that aren't quite as barbaric will pin them in this manner. Normally we melt the complete insect so we can see the whole thing. Just like any form of taxidermy, you gotta make sure everything is preserved correctly for your mounts. If you do it correctly, these insects could last you about a hundred years. That's a long time and you can share it with all your generations to come. So make sure and pay extra special attention to this episode. People think insect hunters are ruthless killers, but that's a lie. I get pretty close to my insects whether they're alive or dead. A true insect hunter will realize that insects like June here won't live very long anyways once they become an adult. A true insect hunter will get them ready to mount so they can be remembered for a long time. Let's look at some equipment. There are many ways to kill insects. Three of the ways we'll be talking about are using a freezer, kill jars, and alcohol. Using a freezer is a safe and effective way to do your insect hunting. It's also pretty cheap. You can get your family involved like a true insect hunter, have your grandparents donate pill bottles, which are great for storing insects, or you can have little Junior donate his baby bottles to get those insects in there. Also, if you go on an insect hunting date, you can go and 
Here's some ketchup containers that have been cleaned out. They're great and lightweight for carrying around lots of insects. Once you do have insects inside of these containers, you're gonna stick them in the freezer overnight and that should kill them so that we're ready to mount them. Ziploc bags are also a good alternative for killing. Make sure and label your containers in the freezer so people know exactly what's in there. That would be a bad day for your trophy and for the person unfortunate enough to eat the insect. Another way to kill your insects is by using kill jars. These take a little bit more work and need some supervision, so check out our last video in our series and you can see exactly what you need to put in there and how to do it. You're usually going to put some ethyl acetate or nail polish remover in there to knock them down. Once you've got your chemicals in the jar, you can put some paper towels in there and your insects. It will kill them within one or two hours. The other way you can take care of your insects and kill them is by putting them in alcohol. Now, all you have to do is get some rubbing alcohol or ethyl alcohol, and then you can put them inside of there and within one to two minutes they'll be dead. You can leave them in there until you're ready to mount them and they won't get dry, so it's a great option if you've got some good supervision. Make sure no matter how you killed your insects that you keep everything well organized and make sure and mark everything and write down where you got them at and when you found them so that when we're ready to create labels, that'll be a fast and efficient process. Well, hello there, kitties. It's so good to have somebody come and visit me. Oh, well, I'm glad I can communicate with you through the television. Hey, but back in my day, we didn't have that way to communicate. We, if we wanted to communicate, had to write on a cave wall and hope somebody would walk by and look at it. Well, I'm here to tell you a little bit about some comparisons between the different ways to kill your insects. Now, we're going to talk about freezing first. The freezing back in my day was a little different. If we wanted to freeze our insects, we didn't have freezers. We just stuck them in the ice chest for a while and that's how we'd kill our insects. Some of the benefits of freezing your insects is that it's safe, cheap, and very easy to do. Some of the downsides of freezing is it takes a little longer to kill your insects, so you're probably going to just want to leave them in there all night. You also have to take them out and thaw them before you can pin them. Another one of the downsides of freezing your insects is that if you're trying to go camping across the Oregon Trail, you won't be close to a freezer, so you probably won't be able to kill them very fast. And that can be a problem, so you might want to try another method, like possibly using a kill jar. Well, back in my day, we didn't have all these fancy chemicals you could buy in stores. If we wanted to get chemicals, we had to just go out and gather herbs and grind them up so we could make chemicals to kill insects. One of the benefits of using a kill jar is you can kill the insects much faster than if you've got them in the freezer. You can also take a kill jar with you to the field so you can kill your insects while you're out collecting. One of the downsides of using a kill jar is you'll need to know how to handle chemicals. You're all so lucky to know how to become insect hunters because back in my day we didn't have insect hunters. We just had bounty hunters and they were pretty scary. Oh dear, well, yeah, so I'm getting a little distracted again. Yes, yeah, so said uh, alcohol. Uh, it's a good killing method. You can use it, yes. Uh, some of the benefits of using alcohol is it's the fastest killing method there is. You can also store aquatic insects in there so they'll be preserved for a long time and uh, you can carry it with you out in the field as well so you can take it where you need it. Some of the downsides of using alcohol is that if you put 
insects that appear to be hairy in there, like bees or butterflies or moths, it'll destroy your specimens, so you have to avoid that. It also uh, requires that you handle chemicals. Carrying around that much alcohol could also leave a big mess, so you have to be extra careful with it. Hopefully, these comparisons have helped you so you can make the right decision of what type of killing method is best for you and the insects you've collected. Like my great-granddaddy Atticus Bedford McGee once said, always know your options. Thank you for watching. Greetings, friends. Charles here. Unfortunately, we'll have to put up with Danny and his shenanigans at least one more time. Let's see what he has for us. Don't smell your chemicals to see if they are working. By this point, Danny has lost the few remaining brain cells left in his head. Don't open your chemicals inside in the kitchen or other places where people are at. Only open it outside so you can stay away from those nasty smells. Never put scaled insects like butterflies or moths into a jar of alcohol. This will destroy them and their wings as you have seen with Danny's little conundrum. Also avoid putting bees and other insects that appear to be hairy into alcohol because it can taint their hairs and make them look soggy and wet even when they're dried. insect which is not killed properly will suffer greatly during the pinning process. Make sure when you attempt to kill your insects you actually succeed in doing so. Or else they might run away. <laughs> I see you have made a wise choice. I am the Oracle and I am he who sees all. I can already see your future, friend. I see you going over here and opening up our next video about pinning. I can see you know a respectable and wise man when you see one. And you'll know that he will be in that video teaching you about pinning. Ah, you are wise indeed. 
but if you're seeking greater wisdom, go down below in the links and you'll find paths to lead you into greater understanding of all things related with insect hunting glory. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy hunting.